Hello, welcome back. I'm more or less set up now in my new workshop, so I've been getting stuck in. I had to rearrange things to make a bit more space around the SLR, making the most of every bike-shaped gap I could find. It's now November, so it's unlikely I'll be heading out on the others until the spring, so I tucked them in and told them a nice bedtime story. Now, once upon a time, a 22-year-old boy had a motorbike. The side stand switch on that bike was being temperamental, so he removed it and bypassed the circuitry as a quick fix. Now that little boy is all grown up and has finally got round to buying a replacement. It needed a bit of a clean up, so I gave it a quick scrub before testing it to make sure it was actually working properly. Next, I dug out the airbox and reminded myself of its condition. I had a vague memory of fitting a new filter when it first came off the road, but it had been six years, so I thought I'd double check. It also had quite a bit of grit and dirt inside, so I figured I'd open it up and give it a thorough clean. Now, for as long as I've been working on this bike, I've been battling the dust and discomfort that comes with a concrete floor. And those cheapy foam tiles didn't really cut it. So I bit the bullet and ordered some decent heavy duty tiles from the garage floor company. I've had my eye on these for a few years, and now that I finally have a proper space, I decided now was the time. And it's completely transformed the space. Just love it, I love it. We had a family meeting, we decided it was best if I sleep here now. Now I promise you some carb balancing, so let's pull out the carb tube. I'm grateful I'd fitted the vacuum takeoff tubes back when I had good access to the inlet ports. So all I had to do was connect the tube to the right connectors on the carb tube. Then hung it in a convenient place where I could see it. I started the bike and let it warm up. Yeah, definitely some adjustments to be made. You make the adjustments using these screws on the throttle linkage. Firstly, I used the left screw to adjust cylinder one to match cylinder two. And I gave it a few blips of the throttle and checked again. Then I moved across and used the far right screw to adjust cylinder four to match cylinder three. And finally, use the middle screw to match three and four with one and two. That fluctuating is from the pressure that I'm putting on with the screwdriver on the linkage, so you do have to be careful. After a few more blips of the throttle, I was pretty happy with how they looked, so I switched it off before I completely smoked the garage up. Now that's about as deep as I'm gonna go on this engine, but if you're interested, a guy called Chris has done a really good strip and rebuild series on YouTube. I'll put a link in so you can check it out. On the next one, I get the front wheel in the air so I can finally start stripping the front end. Bye.